afternoon to all. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. My name is Evi Fragaki, and uh, to begin with, I would like to thank the organizers of the 8th uh, Delphi Economic Forum, giving me the opportunity to moderate this uh, esteemed uh, panel of speakers. Thank you very much, all. Today, we will discuss about the need of uh, digitalization of the public sector and uh, why we consider this as imperative. This, uh, the private sector uh, has raised the bar of uh, the customer experience really fast, and I think that we will agree all that uh, people expect from their governments to keep up this good work. Um, a recent study from uh, McKinsey has shown that uh, residents who are satisfied with the public uh, service um, are nine times more likely to trust their governments overall not only in this topic. And that is, uh, sure, an indication that a fast uh, transformation of the public sector should also be a sustainable target for our country also. So let me introduce, let me present our today's speakers who are, uh, who are uh, truly in place to talk about this necessity and who will try to explain to us uh, the way that this uh, digital transformation taking examples also from the private sector. Uh, Mr. Leonidas Christopoulos, Secretary General Ministry of Digital Governments in Greece. Welcome, Mr. Christopoulos. Mrs. Seb Vasileva, uh, Visa General Manager in Greece, Cyprus, Malta, Israel. Ms. Athena Hadzipetru, CEO of Hellenic Development Bank. Mr. Kostadinos Kolias, Chairman, Economic Chamber of Greece. And Nikos Christodoulou, Mr. Nikos Christodoulou, partner of Deloitte in Greece. Thank you all for being here. Um, Mr. Christopoulos, please elaborate of what extent has the public sector been digitalized till today, and which do you consider as main achievements of the Ministry of uh, Digital Governments? Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much for um, uh, inviting me to discuss about such an interesting topic. Well, it is a topic that we mostly work on uh, on the Ministry of Digital Governance because we have focused mainly on the digitalization of public sector, of the public sector, because as you very rightly said, uh, it is very much connected with gaining the trust of citizens towards the institutions in general. Mm -hmm. And it's not only McKinsey that says that. There is also a study <coughs> from 2017 from the OECD that says that trust of the citizens towards um, the institutions of the state is linked to the way that uh, public services are provided. So when you simplify or digitize these public services, when you make them simpler, when you make them more citizen friendly, then it's only natural that uh, you gain the trust uh, of uh, people. Now, to your question, I would say that uh, compared to what was the case before 2019, mm -hmm. um, I can say that we, uh, we can all admit that there has been a rapid digitalization of the Greek public sector. We, we had, we know that we had 500 uh, digital public services before 2019. Mm -hmm. It's the ones that we have gathered, that we found in uh, several platforms and we gathered under the GovGR platform in March 2020. And since March 2020, uh, we have more than 1,500. Yes. So, it all changed. Exactly. And we're talking about several services, several public services that are quite critical and quite um, uh, complicated. For example, I would say that opening up a business mm -hmm. that we recently digitalized and we presented in January 2023 uh, together with uh, the tax authority and uh, the Ministry of Development was a very, very uh, complicated and demanding procedure to, to simplify and digitalize. Um, so in that sense, I think that uh, during these three years since March, from March 2020 since um, until today, uh, there has been a rapid digitalization of the public sector in very sensitive and critical areas, 
like justice, like, the, like transport, like uh, entrepreneurship, um, life events of citizens. Um, and I think that um, we, will, we will keep on with the same pace for the next years. Uh, I would say, though, that um, the health sector and the justice sector are always the most critical ones in terms of digitalizing public services. We have already done a lot in that area, uh, in the justice, together with the Secretary General, Mr. Alexandris, and in the health sector, together with the Ministry of Health. Um, and I think that we should, for the next four years, uh, if we're still in government, I think we should focus on these two areas to digitalize even further uh, public services in these two areas. And this, it's what uh, the people need more, the, the health sector and the justice sector. You know, it, it's daily life. Exactly. These are two areas that are, if we had, you know, a comparison of which areas are mostly uh, connected to trust, justice and health are mostly connected to the trust of citizens towards the state. So I would say these two areas. Thank you very much. Mrs. Vasileva, Sevi, tell us uh, why you think the, the, this digital, digitalization of the public sector is so important. So first of all, let me thank uh, you for the invitation and for being uh, amongst such esteemed uh, speakers. Well, I mean, I'll start, you know, from a simple uh, consumer view. So, you know, when we mention public sector, public services, the um, instant association that comes is bureaucracy, frustrating, time-consuming interactions. Unfortunately, it is like that. Um, well, imagine what it would be to live in, uh, in a country where all government services or public services are available within a click, 24 hours, seven days a week, or where governments can proactively work uh, to, with, for example, to do smart urban planning with projections about the population, or design tourist strategies, again, with prediction of consumer demand. So uh, I, I'm sure that a lot of us would say, well, it's utopian concept. Well, it's not. Luckily, it's not. And I, I have to say that with as much as we are embracing the future, which is digital first, uh, through the pandemic, uh, facing the economic uncertainties, we are embracing, uh, and as uh, uh, the General Secretary mentioned, we are embracing digital interactions, digital tools. So for the public sector, this is imperative. You said it also in the beginning in your opening uh, remarks. So let me give you an example, and then we'll go to why is it, it is important. Take Estonia, for example. Mm -hmm. Estonia is um, a digitally advanced country, digitally advanced government. They operate a one-stop shop government platform where 99% of all the public services are available 24 hours a day, seven, seven days a week. 98% of the tax declarations are filed electronically in three minutes. And 99% of all of the companies are registered on this platform. So can we be like Estonia? Yes. Mr. Hrstopoulos? I was going to come to the, the other good example is actually Greece. In what percent we are digitalized as a country now? <laughs> well, if Estonia is 99.9? Uh, <laughs> well, the government.gr platform, which is an amazing thing, and it's a platform that will continue to evolve, has now 1,370 public services uploaded with digital our, access. Government.gr. Even, isn't it more? Is it more? It's more. It's more now than, maybe uh, my statistics are old. It's more than uh, 1,500. 1,500. One, okay. More than 1,500. Okay, so and for 2021, so you may have more recent data, in Greece, the digital transactions with the public sector have increased six times. That's 2021. Yes. Most probably now it's... So in 2021, it was 566,000 digital transactions. Most probably now it's... Uh, so yes, we can be. And the, the conclusion is that, or uh, uh, at least the message that we want to pass is the following. When governments embrace digital transformation with a comprehensive strategy, and I have to say that Greece is uh, one of these countries, 
that can unleash incredible, immense benefits to the consumers, citizens, we're all consumers, so citizens, uh, businesses, and the whole community as a whole. So that brings efficiency in cost, in time, access, financial inclusion as well, uh, convenience, speed, and, you know, we always speak about the consumer experience. So, mm -hmm. ultimately, that brings to higher trust in the public institutions and better satisfaction levels. So that's why it is important. It's of part of us, it's part of our lives. Of course. And I am a representative of the uh, digital payments industry. We are very proud to be supporting this transformation as enablers and catalysts with our know-how, thought leadership and solutions. Ms. Hertzpetru. So uh, yes, uh, Mr. I, I just wanted, uh, sorry, Athena. I just wanted to mention because you asked about the percentage. Yes. Of it the would percentage be of digitalization. To... Now, we have this other big platform, which is very, uh, in my eyes, it's even more fundamental to what we're doing, Mythos, uh, that we have all, uh, we are trying to gather all the, um, the services uh, of the Greek state into one platform so that the citizens can see oh, how many, Great. how many, um, procedures do we have? Right now we have almost 5,000 that we have recognized. We think that the Greek state has 5,000 um, administrative procedures, mm -hmm. uh, out of which we have digitalized 1,500. Uh, 1,500, so it's more than 30 percent the digitalization of the Greek public sector that has happened until, uh, now. until now. Great. Uh, Ms. Hadzipetou, uh, my first uh, question would be, what is the role of the Hellenic Development Bank to the digitalization of um, uh, the public and private sector in banking? But uh, it won't be my first question. My first question uh, <laughs> will be about the great project that you have created in just one year, which is the Know Your Customer project, which is um, all that uh, Sevi and Mr. Christopoulos just uh, described, and it is a, a, product, a project that you uh, proposed, you, you made the proposal to the Prime Minister, he accepted it immediately, and you created it in just one year. Tell us about this, because it's a perfect um, example of digitalization in banking. Thank you very much for the invitation in this uh, extraordinary panel and this uh, magic uh, forum of Delphi. Now, uh, I will try to make a connection. We've heard the size, we've heard the GovGR, we've heard the Visa, huge sizes. And I will take you through a startup, let's say, conversion that uh, was for Hellenic Development Bank. Hellenic Development Bank is the uh, institution that provides leverage to public and European funds using the channel of the banks. So our target is to provide uh, financing to SMEs primarily, mm -hmm. and of course to mid-caps as well, depending. Now, how about Know Your Customer? Know Your Customer we can see it is our tool. In the yes, it is our tool. It is our proposal so as to convert a second floor bank, HDB is a second floor bank, to gain visibility on the reception. In that sense, we wanted to uh, understand what are the needs of the customers, mm -hmm. of the end customers. So the journey from B2B to B2B2B, so as to gain understanding <coughs> on their needs, that is A. And the second is to understand the reasons of the failure on the access to finance. Know Your Customer is a platform that serves as a single point of access for the entrepreneurship in Greece. And uh, we receive uh, the applications. We use through the interoperability that we have with the ministry, uh, with uh, AVE and uh, EFCA, the social security. We use the interoperability so as to um, uh, be able for uh, gaining this, uh, let's say, knowledge on the on-off criteria. Uh, tax certificate, social security certificate, and insolvency. So what we do, we receive the application, we do those three on-off criteria, health check, and after having that, 
the entrepreneur is choosing, is making a choice, let's say, and actually is having a, an equal penetration ability than the mid caps, which banks, in which banks, in which financial institutions he wants to be visible as an entrepreneur. The banks receive the application and they are, it's a market forces, so they decide whether they want this customer or not. What even we if, gain... Even if a bank uh, has not a department in, the, in his... Uh, it's everything is, is in the platform. In, yeah. Everything is electronic, everything Perfect. is in the platform. It's a win-win thing. Why? It has, um, first of all, it's an already proven success story because we've tested, as most multinational companies do, in a smaller product, in a microfinance agricultural product. It's already tested for more than uh, two months. And uh, we, we have a, a, very fl a very good flow. We want now to have it from now on. It will be our single point of access for all our products. And we're about to have this uh, platform for the 2.5 billion liquidity that we're throwing in the market effective uh, first week of May. Um, we've already received uh, uh, interest, very high interest from the banking system. It is, that is our channel. We don't do direct finance. And uh, at this point, what I want to highlight and what I want to stress is that through Know Your Customer, we, we've turned uh, what we say um, data as a product. Because most importantly, regardless the functionality, most importantly, we will be able to collect valuable data so as to go back to the policy making and address both the failure as mm -hmm. well as the need on targeted financial engineering. Congratulations for this wow. uh, These are the benefits. Program. It's a win-win it's thing it's because a win -win. it's transparency, it's data sharing mentality, market forces, digital process, one time and single point of access. It takes five minutes, we measure it, to complete uh, the application and is a smart integration with uh, AVE and EFCA through interoperability. Great. Uh, Mr. Kolias, per your opinion, uh, what are the necessary reforms needed for the digitalization of the Greek economy, especially? Yes, thank you, Mr. Fagaki, and I'm, I'm very pleased to be uh, in such a great panel discussion with, uh, among uh, <laughs> such uh, esteemed, esteemed and distinguished speakers. Uh, I, will see, I will switch in, in Greek and I will start. Uh, th 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 Uh, απαντώντας στην, uh, στην ερώτηση που βάλατε πριν στον κύριο Χριστόπουλο. Και ήταν κάτι που μου έκανε τεράστια εντύπωση. Το διάβασα πριν από ένα μήνα. Διάβασα μία έρευνα, μία μελέτη που έλεγε ότι από τις ηλικίε από 25 μέχρι 64 ετών, πάνω από το 10% αυτών δεν μπήκαν καν στο ίντερνετ τον τελευταίο μήνα. Όταν συζητούμε λοιπόν για Artificial Intelligence ε, και για Chat GPT, ε, νομίζω ότι έχουμε πολύ ακόμα δρόμο να διανύσουμε στη χώρα. Είναι δεδομένο ότι γίνανε μεγάλα άλματα στο δημόσιο τομέα με το gov.gr. Ήταν πάρα, πάρα πολύ σημαντικό αυτό που έγινε ε, εν μέσω πανδημίας. Ήταν πολύ σημαντική η εξέλιξη που είχαμε και στον ιδιωτικό τομέα για να μπορέσει να παρακολουθήσει τις εξελίξεις, για να μπορέσει να να εφαρμόσει την, την εκπαίδευση, την, την εργασία από μακριά και για να μπορέσει να αναβαθμιστεί τεχνολογικά για να, να είναι ανταγωνιστική η επιχείρηση σε αυτό το ε, διεθνώς ανταγωνιστικό περιβάλλον. Αλλά νομίζω ότι εκεί που πρέπει να εστιάσουμε και εμείς ως Οικονομικό Επιμελητήριο, εκεί έχουμε διακρίνει την ανάγκη να είναι έντονη και γι' αυτό μέσω σεμιναρίων, μέσω κατάρτιση και εκπαίδευση, σε οποιοδήποτε πρόγραμμα κατάρτιση και εκπαίδευση εφαρμόζουμε στο Οικονομικό Επιμελητήριο, που αφορά γενικά στην οικονομία, εντάσσουμε τι ψηφιακέ δεξιότητε ω κάτι το οποίο πλέον είναι απαραίτητο ε, για, την, ε, για την οικονομία και την κοινωνία. Και η ανάγκη είναι στι μεγαλύτερε ηλικίε. Και εκεί πέρα μπορεί να δημιουργηθούν μεγάλε ανισότητε στην αγορά εργασία. Όσο μένουν πίσω ψηφιακά και υπάρχει ψηφιακός αναλφαβητισμός ακόμα, αυτοί οι άνθρωποι δεν έχουν ίσες ευκαιρίες για εργασία σε αυτή τη σύγχρονη εποχή. Ε, νομίζω ότι 
ότι το ζητούμενο είναι να καταπιστούν αυτοί οι άνθρωποι. Βεβαίω πρέπει να γίνουν κι άλλα βήματα στο δημόσιο τομέα. Βεβαίω και πρέπει να προχωρήσουμε και να ολοκληρώσουμε ε, το ψηφιακό κτηματολόγιο, την ψηφιακή ταυτότητα κτηρίου, που είναι πολύ σημαντικό για τον επενδυτή να έρθει στη χώρα και να βλέπει ακριβώ ποιο είναι αυτό. Είναι πολύ σημαντικό να ολοκληρώσουμε την ψηφιοποίηση του ΕΦΚΑ με τι συντάξει και να φτάσουμε σε ένα σημείο που εγώ στην ηλικία που είμαι και δεν είμαι ακόμα σε σύνταξη για να βγω σε σύνταξη, αλλά μπορώ ανά πάσα στιγμή να βλέπω ποια είναι τα ένσημά μου και άμα αποφάσι, αν μπορούσα να βγω τώρα στη σύνταξη, στη σύνταξη που θα έπαιρνα, με όλες βέβαια τις δικλείδες ασφαλείας που υπάρχουν για τα προσωπικά δεδομένα. Είναι σημαντικό να ολοκληρώσουμε την ψηφιοποίηση στο φορολογικό μας σύστημα και στους φορολογικούς ελέγχους και στη φορολογική νομοθεσία, ε, ολοκληρώνοντας και την κωδικοποίηση και θα κλείσω με αυτό. Ξέρετε, αν πας να κάνεις μια επένδυση στην Αυστραλία και ζητήσεις το φορολογικό σύστημα της χώρας, θα σου δώσουν ψηφιακά ένα τετρασέλιδο και θα σου πούν αυτό είναι το, ψηφι... το... το... Αυτό είναι το φορολογικό μας σύστημα. Σε αυτή τη χώρα έχουμε χαθεί με, τις... με τους νόμους, τις υπουργικές απεφάσεις, τις εγκυκλίους, και όλα τα υπόλοιπα και ο επενδυτής είναι μέσα σε ένα χάος. Νομίζω ότι πρέπει να ολοκληρωθεί και αυτή η διαδικασία και τότε θα είμαστε σε πολύ καλύτερο επίπεδο από ό,τι είμαστε σήμερα. We have all made a process, sure. however. <laughs> uh, Mr. Christodoulis, uh, as a partner of Deloitte uh, and having a global view about the, of, of a partner in a big four corporation, is the digitalization of the public sector a key tool to increase the foreign direct investment, the FDI, in the country? The, uh, good afternoon, first of all. Thank you very much for the invitation. The simple answer is absolutely yes. Uh, FDI has to do with, um, uh, the, let's say, with the digital transformation and the digitalization. Why? Because it brings transparency, uh, it brings speed, Uh, it uh, reduces bureaucracy, it improves interoperability. And I think that the exams that were given also by Ms. Haji Petru, but also by the, uh, my, by the other colleagues, actually are to this direction. I think that the Ministry of Digital Government has done a, a tremendous good job these four years. Still, there are a lot, a lot of things to be done. And, um, If I am to ask, if I'm be asked what are these things to be done, I think that Mr. Kolias very correctly mentioned the cadastre. Uh, he also mentioned the health. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if I was about to put another one, it's justice. Justice. So one, uh, one investor that comes to Greece wants actually to, be, to have a transparent justice. So now that ChatGPT has actually become a lower in the US, we cannot have uh, 10 years, basically, to, you know, to, to resolve an issue between uh, two neighbors here in Greece. <laughs> so I think that it's very, very important, uh, the justice to be a priority for the next four years. Um, now, <laughs> whether now the question, uh, if now the FDI, the digital transformation, is enough mm -hmm. uh, for FDI, Also, the simple answer is not. Because apart from the digital transformation, it's very important to be responsible and serious. So somebody that wants to invest here in Greece, and now we're in euros, will be very difficult come to invest if tomorrow the, our currency will be you know, Anna Maria. Or if uh, we have a long journey of privatizations in the country, And, uh, you know, after some years, we decided to deprivatize the energy sector or the banking sector. So, more important than digital transformation for the country is consistent transformation. Okay. Uh, Mr. Christopoulos, I will come to you again, because we all five must uh, <laughs> make questions to you only, I think. So, uh, As you have uh, listened to all these speakers until now, mm -hmm. uh, tell us, what are the main challenges for the government in enforcing digitalization of public uh, services today and from now on? First, let me just respond to a few of things course, that 
the other speakers That's mentioned. That's why I talked about challenges, because yeah, it, it, it was a yeah. really challenging uh, discussion. One of the main things that I, I, I believe that we were successful in doing it has to do with the FDI. Mm -hmm. And I, I can give you a concrete example, because uh, before the law for digital governance was voted in Parliament back in September 2020, a law, if you remember, that actually codified and modernized the existing legislation that was scattered around too many um, pieces of legislation. We brought it all together and made a codification for digital governance. Inside this law, we wanted to, to send a signal to the markets uh, regarding the kind of business uh, that this government wants to foster in Greece. So we, we decided to institutionalize, to, 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 to include in the law, uh, the cloud-first policy. That was a policy in the UK and many other countries. In order to do that, we consulted with many of the big companies mm -hmm. uh, from the private sector that operated in Greece, um, or that wanted to operate in Greece. Uh, and I, I truly believe that this process of consultation and this law really gave a signal to the global markets uh, in order today it... it, um, it um, so the co a cooperation with public and uh, private sector, yes. you mean? When, when you see, a lot, of, uh, when you see a lot of global companies coming to Greece to invest on, on uh, databases, on cloud uh, policy, on uh, cloud technology and things like that, I think that one of the main factors that contributed mm -hmm. to their decisions was the fact that they saw that the Greek government was institutionalizing, was very ready to institutionalize uh, the digitalization of the public sector through using cloud uh, technology throughout the public sector. And of course, we had issues like um, the blacklist of the US uh, government that we were able to take Greece out of uh, due to, our, to these policies. Now, uh, what I see as challenges for tomorrow, I would see that uh, to sustain this dynamic, this momentum that we have in the digital agenda, which is not very difficult to do, to be honest. One of the main uh, uh, good things, and one of the great things that this ministry actually accomplished was that it put the digitalization and simplification agenda in the center of all the other ministries' uh, policies. You're right. You're, you're absolutely so all the right. other ministries right now are discussing about how I'm going to digitalize social security, how I'm going exactly. to digitalize finance, I'm going to digitalize justice, health, etc. So one of the main things is, is that we put the policy in the center of their agenda. But the main challenge, at least in my eyes, as I told you in the beginning, is the justice system. And I'm very happy to, see, to say that we're, we have, uh, um, we have uh, invested more than 250 million euros from the, um, uh, from the cohesion funds and from the recovery fund to the, to, the, to the projects regarding justice, projects that are all already being implemented. It's not that we're designing them in yes. order to start uh, being implemented. And of course, the, the health system, which is very important for the citizens. So I see those two main policy sectors as the main challenge. And of course, sustaining the momentum and the dynamic of the digitalization of the public sector for the next four to eight years. Sebi, uh, particularly about the payments, what can the payments industry bring to the table to support the, digital, the further digitalization of uh, the public sector? So straight to the answer to save on time and thank you for the question. Uh, first of all, congratulations. I'm really very happy to hear about all these achievements and very happy also to somehow have been, you know, to be part of it. So, what we can bring on the table is the following. So we play, as I said, an enabler and a catalyst role. So we can help the government pursue their policy and their strategies. There are a couple of key areas. So the first one is acceptance, acceptance of mm -hmm. electronic payments. Um, Greece is advanced there. Acceptance is mandated. Of course, there are some remaining verticals that most probably will follow, but that's number one. And governments in general and in Greece they are having a very strong role model role with regards to acceptance, basically, uh, in terms of making it universal in the country. And that's the first thing you do when you have to decrease the cash economy, respectively, the grey economy. 
So the other thing that we that uh, we see as a critical or where we can enable is the disbursement. So governments disperse significant amount of funds to their citizens, to the people in need, but also to businesses. So we speak about government disbursements to consumer. We also speak, of, of course, uh, governments to businesses, and we speak about managing their own payment flows, like travel and entertainment expenses, like procurement. So we bring solutions together with the whole partnership network that we have, uh, because we work with all the banks, all financial institutions. Uh, and we also have a lot of best practice from all over the world, basically. The uh, other area is extremely important, and especially for Greece, it's called SME enablement, SME digitization. Um, they have suffered a lot during the pandemic, and typically, you know, there are too many. In Greece, there's 97%. Of the 90%. 90%, yeah. So these uh, small companies are the backbone of the economy. As much as this is a cliche, this is a fact, and it's true. So we need to bring them, to empower them, to educate them, to make them more competitive, able to basically expand and do business in a global connected mm -hmm. world. So, of course, that doesn't happen without payment. And the last but not least, and I think a little bit under the radar so far, although we have significant progress in Greece, it's about data. So we do process incredible amount of transactions, uh, as you can imagine. So this brings us to the unique position to provide aggregated, anonymized payment data insights that can inform and measure policies. So. Uh, payments data can be especially um, valuable in terms of mobility and spend. And uh, we see that in Greece we already have collaboration with the tourism board. We provide insights about um, travel benchmarks, travel patterns, so that they can proactively design their tourism strategies to address overseas travelers or expand the season. So this is more or less, of course, there are others like urban mobility, for example, which is crucial for a smart city uh, and for the uh, greener economy and better quality of life, but also the experience. But I guess we won't have that much time to talk about it. But yes, this is where we can play a key role. Okay. Um, Ms. Hedzpetru, uh, recently uh, you announced the, uh, the HDB announced uh, a, a 250 million uh, euros digitalization portfolio guarantee fund. Uh, tell us about your prospects regarding the absorption of these funds and what is the expected impact of this uh, digital transformation uh, of the economy? I don't want to keep more time because I see that we are on, yes, uh, we on stress. Almost now, five I would uh, give you a highlight. We have uh, 2.5 billion euros in the market in a while. We have this book that you can take out. So there is an analysis on, on the type of products and the different solutions. We uh, support SMEs. This specific fund is a co-financing fund that um, gives, provides investment liquidity from, as you see here, from 25,000 to 1 million to SMEs. Uh, again, through their platform and everything, as Sevi and uh, um, Mr. yes, uh, explained, as we focus on SMEs. SMEs is the backbone of the Greek economy. SMEs will work from now on with platforms. SMEs will be supported with every kind of solutions in liquidity, and the access will be further improved because we will provide, everyone is committed on that, the banking system as well, will provide the tools. In the current period, the, the majority of our products are co-financing uh, financial engineering products. Why? Because they, they need to be cheaper. So 40% of the interest will be zero, will be subsidized by the Greek state. In that sense, we are uh, embracing and we are assisting the banking system to flow the liquidity, the liquidity that is now more and more secure because we have a robust banking system towards the market. Thank you very much. Mr. Kolias, you told us before about different sectors that you expect to, to be digitalized in the uh, future, but uh, which sectors of public administration 
do you consider as priorities uh, to increase their digitalization um, process? Thank you for the question. I will be quick because we ran out of time. Um, and Tachi, we said what are the tomes and I think we all agreed on that. Ο ένα πυλώνα των κονδυλίων του Ταμείου Ανάκαμψη και Ανθεκτικότητα είναι η ψηφιοποίηση. Αυτό έχει τρει αποδέκτε, κατ' εμέ. Το ένα είναι το κράτο να ολοκληρώσει όσο πιο γρήγορα γίνεται την ψηφιοποίηση των διαδικασιών του. Ο δεύτερο έχει να κάνει με τι επιχειρήσει να, να πάρουν κονδύλια, να πάρουν ρευστότητα για να αναβαθμιστούν ψηφιακά και να μπορέσουν να ανταγωνιστούν τι άλλε επιχειρήσει. Και το τρίτο έχει να κάνει με την αναβάθμιση των δεξιοτήτων, των ψηφιακών δεξιοτήτων του εργατικού δυναμικού, το reskilling και το upskilling που λέμε, για να μπορέσουν και αυτοί να ανταποκριθούν σε αυτό το δύσκολο περιβάλλον. Το μόνο που έχουμε να κάνουμε ως χώρα είναι ταχύς, γρήγορες, μη γραφειοκρατικές διαδικασίες απορρόφησης των κονδυλίων αυτό, για να μπορέσει να ολοκληρωθεί αυτή η διαδικασία και στα τρία σκέλη της. Σας ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Μίστερ Χριστοδούλου. Uh, since uh, 2020, we have observed an increasing volume in, uh, of digital innovation FDI in Greece. Microsoft, Pfizer, Cisco. Um, is there a tried formula of the private sector that the public sector can follow for sustainable digitalization in the future? Yes, and um, to these very esteemed companies that you mentioned, I would also add the Deloitte that we have set up a center in Thessaloniki, which is well known, and there we have uh, about 1,000 1, engineers, mostly, that provide services not only to Greece, but also in Europe. So we see that something big is happening here, and that definitely the public sector goes hand in hand with the private sector. If the public sector provides services that nobody uses, no use, and, and the other way around, if the uh, if the private sector is very illiterate, but the public sector cannot follow, again, actually, we will get the, get the maximum results. One last point, one last comment is the following. We, we see two types of investments. Investments like Microsoft, that actually they build infrastructure, mm -hmm. and this is very, very important for, you know, for the future of the digitalization in Greece. And then there is um, another type of investments like Cisco, like Deloitte, where actually we invest in ICT skills in people. Both of them are very important going forward for the next, let's say, decade. Thank you very much. We are exactly on time. Thank you all for Perfect. this efficiency. <laughs> efficiency, exactly. Uh,